Okay, I'm back. I took a break to have lunch slash dinner. I had a salad with cranberries, cucumbers, baby tomatoes, red cabbage. My favorite to add to it is pumpkin seeds. And a lot of people add chicken or turkey, but my favorite add-on is avocados. I'm just letting the stream go for a few minutes to give the announcement a chance to go up. So I'll recap a little bit for Solstice. We have two main characters. Galen has been introduced as trying to find out what happened to a man named Lev. Yeah, I'm back. Hey, Mono. I just need to go and eat something. I had salad and soup. So for the other half of the game is from a character's perspective named Yanni and she has some more sci-fi element because her quest is to find out what happened to the city and why the engineering is going wrong. I just need to move some things and then I'll get started. It's somewhere in the Arctic. I don't know if Siberia is a game. Just trying to move my Chromebook so I can see chat better. I don't think I'm going to read every line of dialogue this time like I did for the first time because it was exhausting. I know for visual novels, I mean, you might like to just read the dialogue yourself or some people prefer to have the person reading them out, but I, I don't know, I found reading it out loud for the first time just wasn't really the greatest for me. I don't do character voices, so I thought people reading the dialogue themselves, giving the characters their own voices is better. So the first time around I had Yanni and Sam go for the romance option, but I think this time I won't. Also, I always want to go through the scene as quickly as possible because I hate the barking noise in the background. Okay, 
Okay, so we can be a bit aggressive and keep pursuing, even though Sam is saying pretty plainly that he and Love never really talked. So I'm just going to ask what he was doing if he wasn't talking with Sam. Okay, so another addition to our notebook is that love was on good terms with the dogs. You can see that Sam is pretty much a good guy. I mean, he chooses to be as solitary as possible, but Love was someone with um, some problems, but even though he didn't like what Love was doing with the dogs, he just let him go for it because it made him happy. So Lev disappeared 10 days ago, so either Sem or Galen were the last people to see him. So this was right when Lev was beaten up by Istvan's guards. So in the scene that we already saw, Galen did treat Lev. He gave him some kind of medicine. Lev was saying that he was in pain, and presumably Galen gave him a painkiller. Then Sam and the dog saw him, and then Lev disappeared. So this is giving Sam a motive. He's saying that, you know, he's in charge of the dogs and he really didn't like the way that Love's presence would influence the dogs. So he did have a motive to get rid of Love, even if it doesn't really seem like a big deal. Okay, so we can start ramping up some flattery and go for the romance option, but um, I've done that before, so I'm just going to skip it this time. So we don't know what the dogs were smelling on Love, if it was the medicine that Galen gave him, or if he had been drugged perhaps by Istvan, who had his guards beat him up right before that. It's basically telling us that we have multiple possibilities for who and what influenced Lev before his disappearance.
So um, this is the more getting to know you personally option. I'm not going to choose that one. I'm just going to stick with solving the mystery. back in the inn which is owned by Lev's wife well I shouldn't say owned it is run by Lev's wife Slava everything in the city is owned by the families which is relevant they have influence stronger than you might you might suspect over every single character here So this is another branching point that will change what information we get for the mystery. Um, for Yakone and Kasia, we haven't really met them as Yanni and we have as Galen. We have met Laura as Yanni, so I'm going to stick with that route and go talk to them. I like Laura's just super negative attitude. It's kind of rare to see that in a game where it isn't treated for laughs. Like this is just her personality, but we're not mocking her for it. And this is actually an important line for Laura. One rarely has a chance to, to decide anything in this damned city. It's um, been explained before about the compact, which is basically an employment contract that is very similar to slavery. There is very little way you could get out of it. So Laura's life has been decided by other people. So Istvan is one of the suspects for what happened to Lev, and this is giving us more information about him. The first that we got is that he used to rule the city. He's retired now, but he still basically rules it over winter when no one else is here. And that he has done some very violent things in the past, including uh, murder. So this is Laura's perspective on Istvan, which is that he's someone who oppresses her. So she used to be a skilled woman, but she has been downgraded by working for Istvan. So her motive is really if attacking Lev could somehow give her some leverage to get out from her compact. We don't know if she's involved at all, whether she has seen anything, but she definitely has reasons to be angry against how the city works.
this is another aspect of the game where even the characters will disagree with each other whether Kala is real, how much influence it has on people. So for Slava, whether it's real or not doesn't really matter because Lev's chasing it has already ruined her marriage. You have Laura's perspective that it's not the wish-granting thing that some people think it is, but it's all around them in the city. So this is an interesting perspective because unlike Yakone, she's not connected to the tribes, but she does appear to believe that Kala is real. So we're going to have a little card reading here. And Yanni is even a bit of a mystery to us. We haven't been told very much about her except that she is a technician, is how she's introducing herself. But um, engineer is a better term. Okay, so what do we want to know about the past? What happened to love? Well, that's pretty recent and kind of vague thing, but this I think is specific to Yanni. Galen is searching for love, so Yanni wants to know what happened to the person who is here in her job before her. He is missing. That's the official explanation. They haven't really done a search for him, so let's see what the card says for that. So you can see in Slava's response, she's not really worried about what happened to Sarn. He was, he was here and then he was gone. He wasn't an insider. There's, there's a very clear difference between the people who live in, in the city full time and the outsiders who just come to interfere. And Yanni's not telling them that she's investigating his disappearance. She's just kind of saying, yeah, let's just do a fun card reading. She's not being completely open. Nobody in the city is 100% honest with anybody. So the card that Sarn got is, his journey ended before it began. He ventured and came to a halt soon after. Cold, he didn't achieve his goal. So this is a pretty accurate reading of the star. It's not really a card you want to get in this circumstance. So the reason that Sarn was here, he didn't get that done. He was cut off. Laura's card said the former technician died during his mission in the city. So her interpretation is that the missing technician is dead, which leads to the question, how did he die? And Slava's just blowing her off and saying that it's, she's overdramatic. Laura it just overdramatizes everything. Alright, so for Yanni's mission of what's going on in the city, is someone harming the people here? Well, we already know that Istvan and the compact system is harming people, so I'm going to be more specific and ask about sabotage, because that is specifically why Yanni and Sarn were sent here. Um, Monochrome, do I read cards? Not actively, but I used to be pretty interested in them. I do still have a couple tarot decks and I still have the interest in them. It's a fun thing to look up. It's actually kind of funny because I have a new witch's spell book sitting right next to me, like right now. 
so there is definitely some you know mysticism going on in my life that I enjoy Alright, so here's another hint to the answer of who or what is affecting the city itself. You've got the Popas, so which is specifically a female card, a female with power and of change. So I don't know how obvious it is in this game, but this is a female-centric game. Most of the characters are female. And in visual novels, you don't really get that. You'll get like a harem game or something, but that actually is relevant to the mysteries. Okay, Mona, you want to know a funny story? Um, I was working and there was a mother who came in with her two kids, right? Little boy, little girl. And the little girl was kind of acting up a little bit. So she said, you know, oh, Charity, calm down and things like that, right? And I said something to the little girl and I, I used her name. I said, you know, here are your books, Charity. And she was shocked that I knew her name. And then her little brother spoke up and was like, how did you know her name? And like to me and the mother, you know, it's obvious I knew what her name was because I just heard her mother using it. But the kids didn't notice this. So I just told them and said, oh, it's just magic. I w I'm psychic I just know her name and and they wouldn't like accept that answer they were like tell me tell me tell me and it was just the funniest thing that to give them like this an answer of it's magic and they had kind of right at that age where they still maybe think magic is real I thought that was like, just super fun okay sorry back to the game here <laughs> So Yanni's blowing off the cards, but this is actually a mistake. The cards are actually answering her questions with complete accuracy. All right, so for the future, what will the weather be? So this is kind of, it seems like a throwaway question, but it actually isn't considering we are in the Arctic and the weather is very relevant to whether you live or die. And we have the broader, what awaits us here? So I'm actually going to go with the weather because the reason Yanni's here is to check on the city's health and safety, make sure everything is working properly. And that includes weather control, keeping the outside out from killing everyone so I'm gonna see what this one is <laughs> their lives were never the same yeah I made them become magicians just in that moment okay so Yanni's being flippant here and Laura says it's gonna snow All right, the last card is death, which generally means change. Oh, it looks like Slava picked up the card instead of Yanni. And the card changed. So when Slava picked up the card, she got death. And when Yanni picked it up, it's the hanged man, which kind of means someone who's not Getting a good time, I think, is one way of putting it. Um, the hangman is a complicated answer, but it does make sense in context of Yanni because she's being not quite put in a scapegoat position, but she is getting used by various people. So yeah, this is um, one possible ending for the game is that the city itself falls apart and the whole family's system is overrun, which is what Laura would like.
Yet and the Hangman, an outsider bringing a solution. So the outsider can either be Yanni or Galen, and this is more the good ending option. Okay, so Laura's warning us again, this time, about Galen, who's the other main character. So this is probably a card reading that Laura has done. Laura claims she saw death in Galen's destiny. It's pretty vague, it could mean anything, but... What's going on in the city could be more complicated than it seems, and Laura is one of the doesn't know what she knows type characters. So again, with her doesn't know what she know place in the story. She has this key, but she has no idea what it's for. She just knows it's important. Alright, so stuff is going wrong with the city. And we're moving over to Galen's diary now. I was getting worried an entire day and I was no closer to finding Lev. It became more and more evident something must have gone wrong. Was there ever a good reason for a man to disappear from a place that had no way out? But even asking about him was interfering with a balanced system of secrets and personal goals. A system where respecting other people's privacy was the first and most important rule of conduct. I can't say I didn't enjoy disrupting the stagnant routine of the city, if only for a moment. But such small pleasures couldn't make up for the fact that I was a doctor who had just lost his patient, albeit in a somewhat unconventional way. That isn't to say I didn't have chances to practice my art, though. Okay, so before we find out what was going on with Yanni and the earthquake explosion, we're talking with Galen and Constance. Constance, who has been passing out and getting bloody noses.
So this is more relevant than it might seem. Every year during true winter, Constance gets sick. And this is something that was interesting to note. Galen started to ask Constance about herself, but she changed the subject and went back to talking about him. So Galen's complained multiple times about being bored. So I'm just gonna say the lack of people is the worst. Alan's not being honest about why he's here. And the way Constance is acting as if Nana Geed had control over where Galen was going, you can kind of imagine that um, Constance, her situation might be similar to Laura's. Here's Constance disagreeing that even though she's a bathhouse owner and 
you know, sleeps around and apparently has pupils that she teaches to sleep around, beauty really isn't the most important thing to her. She gets judged as being shallow, but she has a lot more depth to her. But again, she's refusing to talk about herself. So I'm not going with the romance options, so I'm just going to skip that one. And he's too sure of himself, because he is pretty confident he was a mercenary before he was involved in the guard. And he seems like a good person. This is, um, Galen's, like, his line before about trusting his instinct. People, nobody's really straightforward, so this is an instinct comment, so I'm going to go with that one. Constance agrees with you and warns that Cassie does have a gentle heart and this can get him in trouble or get you in trouble. And again, one of the bad endings is if you are too sentimental, you make the wrong choice and it's bad. So even when she's asked directly, Constance is not willing to talk about herself. And Galen interprets that as meaning she's got a compact too, because that's basically the one thing you never ask about in the city. Nobody wants to talk about their slave act. Constance has gone back to calling him Doctor instead of calling him Gallon. So this time, Galen's receiving a warning. So Yanni was told to stay away from Galen, and now Constance is warning Galen about the possibility of a revolution in the city. So one of Yanni's um, tarot reading cards was saying that revolution and the city being turned to dust was a possibility. And this is Constance saying, well, if that happens, there's already forces in place that really don't want that to happen. Like the families and their control over it, it would be very difficult to fight that. And here's Constance saying, if you want to end your adventure prematurely, go and ask about rebellion, which is what happened to Sarn. Sarn was asking questions that the families did not want him to ask. And like the card said, he died because of that.
Okay, and we're back to the mysterious earthquake event. So we're on the same timeline as Yanni now. And here's our first sign of the city crumbling to dust option. The lamp that was identical to this one exploded with something coming out of it and just got destroyed. So again, Yanni is not decided on whether what's happening to the city is sabotage or whether it's just a malfunction. But the others don't know about the whole sabotage thing. So Constance said she saw somebody running away from the market and Gallen tells her you were just imagining it, which is, you know, pretty suspicious. Yanni doesn't know if the sabotage is real or who's behind it and this is Gallen undermining that question. And he's trying to prevent Cassia from going looking around and seeing if anybody was in the area or not. So this is an important scene to consider later on. You have to look at what would motivate Gallen to say, let's not look too closely at this explosion that just happened.
And Laura gets told off for over-dramatizing things, but she is completely right. If the city malfunctions, there's, there's nowhere to go. They are in the middle of nowhere and they will all freeze to death. Okay, so chapter 2 starts with Yanni's diary. Things were not looking up. My worst suspicions received a very tangible confirmation. The system was clearly unbalanced, possibly via intentional sabotage. What's worth, worse, nobody in the city seemed to understand the gravity of the situation or its underlying implications. Well, almost nobody. It was high time to have a few words with our mysterious doctor. Okay, so things are getting real. They're both acknowledging that their presence in the city is very strange. It's more than coincidental timing that these two people would have come here for true winter. And this is one of the important questions for your playthrough. Do you begin to trust Gallen, or do you continue and just cover up why you're here? So for this point, I'm going to tell him that I am sincerely trying to save the city from the collapse that seems to be impending. So this is Yanni's true self and purpose. She's a member of the faculty, which is a secret society of technicians who built the city centuries ago. And when we were introduced to the city, it was not, it was a hostile takeover. The city was never supposed to be there. It was, the faculty aren't necessarily the good guys. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Even though she's here to save the lives of the people, who live in the city right now, to say that Yanni is on a goodwill mission isn't exactly true. Okay, so on a different subject for Lev, do we give him any information or do we continue and share information with him? So basically, if you give info, you will get info. So she said that the pressure had found a way out, but her true belief is that someone is sabotaging. Whether it's love, we don't know.
Okay, now the reverse is true. We are answering as Galen. Do we hold back? I'm going to go with the truth. And that's the most important question. Gallen is supposedly a doctor who's here just for the winter. He doesn't have a reason to be looking for love. And again, Yanya identified herself, so Gallen is going to do the same thing. So here we have the truth coming out that Galen is part of a group of powerful magicians. So this is really at the heart of the game that is, it's a mixture of science and magic. And you can either have them work together or work at odds. So here is the result of, of the choices that we just made. We chose to have science and magic work together. So the two pieces of um, cl the clues that we got earlier are able to come together now. So that is an outcome that I received on my first playthrough. I had, I did not agree to share information. So the information in the diary, it was, it was burned. It was a lost. So this is a game, sometimes in visual novels, you can't really tell where the important choices are, but this was one of them. Okay, so this is from Lev's diary. I met with I again. Now I know what I should do. Here is a guide I can trust. Someone who understands that Kala isn't just an object, but is also a test. So who is he talking about? OK, 
okay, and Gallon was right here that Lev found a secret door. So we don't know for sure where Lev is, but he's probably in this secret area. So Yanni has gone to see Istvan. Um, if you just look around this area, you can see there's a lot of astrological charts and this telescope in the back. And this comment that's kind of throwaway. Um, earlier they said anybody who would want to attack the city must be mad. And then you have this comment that Istvan's science must have gone mad. So the question of people's sanity in the city, it's not just love that's gone crazy, even though his is the most obvious. Um, the mix of magic and technology is affecting everyone who lives there in different ways. So the plans have gone missing, and it is relevant that only someone who is connected to the faculty would be able to understand them in the first place, and only someone who has access to Istvan's library would be able to steal them. So you're here they're trying to tell you, think about who could get in and who would be in need of those.
Okay, and Istvan is telling us we have a job to do. Besides fixing the city, we have to blame someone. Regardless of what caused it, we have to find someone to point the finger at. Okay, so interestingly, we ask Istvan about Kala because of what popped up in Lev's diary was he had a meeting with someone named I. So you assume, of course, it's Istvan, but he, as soon as Kala is brought up, Istvan just shuts down the conversation and tells you to leave. So he's not willing to say if he knows anything other than he thinks Kala is a fairy tale. So like it was mentioned before, the city is getting colder. So this is an important question too. Usually you don't suspect your main characters, but you're meant to in this game. So could Galen be the person making the sabotage for the city? Like he is telling Cassia that the plants are affected by the city getting colder, but he could still be the one responsible for that. Okay, so I'm not I'm not gonna flirt here, sorry. <laughs>
At this point, we don't know Cassia's backstory. It's just being pointed out to us that Constance, who knows everything about everybody, doesn't know Cassia's backstory either. So while we're looking for who is sabotaging the city, we have no idea what motives Cassia might have. So, Cassia kind of suspects that Slava killed Lev, and it's true that she is involved romantically with, with Istvan. But to me, I don't think she's behind it. She had other opportunities and how she would benefit by taking out Lev after being with him for so long. So we have two questions about Cassia. Um, I'm going to ask why he quit. Because it's important to every character's backstory as to why they specifically came to this city in the middle of nowhere. So like basically everybody else in the city, Cassia is saying that he he feels helpless. There is only so much one man can do. He he was assessed by Constance and Gallen as being a good person, and he's in the city that's very corrupt, but there's not really a whole lot that he can do about it. We're going to go talk to Istvan.
So from Istvan's perspective, yeah, people do vanish all the time. He's not the most helpful person, honestly.
So plot-wise, this is a big deal. Galen has figured out that the water currents that the city depends on, the water is in the walls of everything in the city. You can see them in these big pipes here in the background. So when we were talking before with Yakone and she said that the city was cursed, this is what she's talking about. It's not just the systems itself, the water that is everywhere is being affected. So it's not just the city, but also areas like the bathhouse. We have Yanni trying to get a sample of the bathhouse water so she can test it. And Lev was asking about magic, so it is possible that the magic interference that's happening here was because of Lev, or it was because of whoever he was talking to, named I. There's a couple of people in the game who have shown some magic tendencies, including Laura and Yakone. Istvan himself, on the other hand, seems to not care at all about magic. He calls Kala a myth. Okay, so I have a choice here. I can save one of three plants. So our choices are something that could heal either ourselves or someone else, something to cause a hallucination or to increase magic potency, or we have a fatal poison. And I'm going to make a new save file at this point, and I'm going to choose magic drug. Okay, so that's quite the ominous moment there. Galen saying that the curse is stronger than he expected, and his magic on its own could barely save the life of one plant. So trying to use whatever abilities he has to deal with the entire citywide problem just isn't going to happen. And we're back with Yanni now. She's investigating the lamp incident. And as a recap, she needs to find somebody to blame for the lamp because Istvan will, well, he's basically going to blame her if she doesn't make that choice. and this is relevant to that destroying the lamppost required obscure knowledge and weeks of preparation. So you can ask Lev who was steadily growing more into his madness was capable of this or who had the knowledge about the city itself. Most importantly who stole the plans that were in the family's library that said 
where the water control system was. So you can say with certainty if you did suspect Gallen, he's not responsible for the lamp exploding because he was not here for that long. And this is an important line too that whoever is sabotaging the system is the same as everyone else in that the city leaves you with nowhere to go if your intention is to destroy the city itself during the time when most people who live here are not here, you're still going to be sacrificing yourself as well. So almost everyone in the city has talked about the compact, which is basically like a slavery contract. And we've seen a couple people who who are desperate, who, who do see no way out of their misery like Laura, and we've seen that Slava has a compact with Istvan. Um, Constance most likely has one as well. She's been called an informant by Cassia. We don't know for sure what Cassia has going on, or Yakone, but those are possibilities. They don't really seem like they're in despair right now though. Okay, so here's Takone, and hopefully we will learn more about her motives. Apparently she was attacked by Sem. And this is pretty important. The waters are affecting everyone in the city. He didn't attack her just because he was upset, but he was in a trance. His eyes were glazed. So what was going on there with Sam? And could it be related to how his dogs said that Lev smelled funny on his last day and that he might have been drugged? Okay, so we have some hints here that Sam might be more violent than he seems. Again, we're avoiding the romance options here, just because I've seen them before.
Alright, so everyone in town is basically at this party. So why is Cassia leaving? Is this suspicious? So Gallon's following him. So Cassia has um, admitted that he has a compact, but he's not saying what's actually in it. Okay, so we can choose to investigate more about Kala. Yanni hasn't really learned very much about it. I'm going to focus on the explosion though since that is uniquely her wheelhouse. So Constance is saying that most people are blaming Istvan, but not what she thinks. And she's ending the conversation quickly. She doesn't really want to talk about the explosions.
So Yakone is a good person to ask this question. She and her tribe are known for their magic, their connection to the land originally before the city was built. And it is possible that Yakone is the cause of, well, anything or everything. Or she might know who is. And yeah, this is Galen in a nutshell. He pretends to be easygoing, but he's pretty dedicated to his job, which isn't what he's telling other people it is. So Galen kind of warmed up Yakone there, and she is opening up a little more about what she thinks is going on. And her ancestors, the curse that they put on the city when basically the magic in the caves, which is what Kala really is, was stolen to make the city. So she thinks it's the curse that's killing the plants. And that's a pretty good description of what the city is like. It's all just suffering. Everyone here kind of has their own motive to hate the place and to want to sabotage it. He's trying to figure out if Yakone is the person that Love was talking about in his journal. And it really does seem as if Yakone has tried to move away from the magic of her ancestors, so it's unlikely that she is that person who was helping Love.
even though other people have said that Lev and Yakone spoke a lot, she's telling Galen that she tried to push Lev away from magic. We're back with Yanni's diary. The party was surreal, a desperate attempt at relaxation and joy. It failed miserably. Laura compared it to the calm at the eye of a cyclone. For me, it was more as if we turned our backs to the hurricane, hoping it would disappear. Everyone was feeling the gravity of recent events, though they pretended otherwise. As wine kept flowing, People began to lose their tempers, and the joyful appearances took a nosedive. Only Gallon seemed immune. He was truly enjoying himself, drinking away and fooling around like a faculty novice on his first leave. I found it appalling. The only thing that kept me from leaving was the faint hope that our mysterious enemy would be drinking as well, and would let their guard down enough to make their first mistake. So I stayed, another fool waiting for things to happen of their own accord. Good thing Sam was there to keep me company. Although this isn't quite as relevant since we did not take the romance option with Sam. And this is um, relevant as well, that the dogs are getting more upset as Solstice draws near. It hasn't been mentioned before in the game, but obviously the game has this as its name, so it's a very relevant time period to what is happening to the city. So here's some of what Istvan's motives could be for destroying the city. He feels trapped as well. He's um, wanted to get out and pursue his true stargazing love. But he's, he's a member of the family, so he's always going to be trapped in some way. He didn't want to be here for the winter. And again, Istvan is saying he can't see through the telescope, but Galen um, looked at his eyes and said his eyes are fine. So the problem is either the telescope or something else.
Okay, now back to Gallen's diary. Constance was a hell of a hostess. The drinks she served put all 33 types of rum from Pepper Island to shame. The flavors, textures, suspicious colors, the kick. It was an alcoholic paradise. Of course, one can never know when a doctor will be needed, so I kept my sobering concoction close and tried not to get too crazy, which wasn't very difficult since Cassia left quite early. There was a lot of gossip, but I got the feeling everyone was refraining from sensitive topics. A reasonable strategy for an isolated group of people. They couldn't afford to make enemies. You don't have to be clairvoyant to realize their relationships are complex. There was hostility between Slava and Laura, a strange aura of distrust surrounding Sem, and the way people were looking at Istvan seemed a mix mixture of fear, respect, and sheer hatred. Yakone was an outsider. Constance seemed to be the only person everyone genuinely liked. So Laura has been looking at her tarot cards again, and she's actually right here. The cards have been completely accurate about what's going to happen. Okay, so some more background information. Isvan's brother brought Constance to the city. She didn't come here of her own free will, she was a slave. And if we look back, Isvan's brother was killed and Isvan killed all of those people. Not just the ones who directly attacked his brother, but the families of those people. So you can ask yourself, is Constance related to those people that Istvan wronged. So here's the heart of the conflict between Laura and Slava, that Laura basically lost her freedom and her ability to choose her life for herself because she signed a compact with 
Istvan and the families. So anyone who's choosing to be with Istvan, she can't understand that at all, and Slava is choosing to be in a romantic relationship with Istvan. And this is a pretty good question. Did Slava start the relationship with Isvan before or after Lev started to go mad because they failed in the search for Kala? So Kala is seen as sort of a wish-granting thing. So did Lev disappear because Slava wished for it? Like Cassia said, did Slava have anything to do with Lev's disappearance? Okay, so Cassia is back from wherever he disappeared to and refused to allow Galen to go with him. And that is that Lev has been found dead. Three weeks after he disappeared, Cassia found the body. So hopefully Cassia will explain how he found it. chapter 3. Now again, Yanni needs to point the finger at someone, so this is where the witch hunt title is coming from. Not only is magic very relevant to the story and what goes on inside the city, but at this point, the focus of the investigation has now become who killed Love, not what happened to Love. So here's the important question for this moment is, how did Cassia know where this hidden chamber was? And the answer is that Lev told them. He said the exact same thing when he saw Galen, the one time he saw him, that he was talking things that didn't make any sense, but they did make sense because he was talking about this door.
Okay, so he, Lev had some bite marks on his arm, and this is kind of a hint that Sem might have been involved. Mostly because of the comments earlier that Lev had a funny smell to him, the dogs could smell something strange on him. Gallen is not sure exactly what killed him. You can see the evidence that he had been beaten up by Istvan's guards, and the dog bite marks could have been from an encounter with Sam's dogs after he saw Gallen or right before he entered this area. It's not clear. So the caves are like what Yakone said, this is what was originally here before the city was built, a network of caves, and they were magically inclined with that power concentrated in the waters that were harvested through the pipes you can see up here in the background to make living in the city viable. So Galen's throwing out a lot of explanations that could be the reason for what killed Lev, but he's not saying with certainty what did it. So Cassia was in here first and he had the opportunity perhaps to change something about the scene. We don't know if he did. Galen is being a bit vague on Lev's cause of death. And we have Yanni who is still looking for the control room. For the city but she is asking the important questions so did he die of a stroke or a heart attack probably not So here we have more of the mix of science and technology. Yanni's saying she can't really do anything, but Galen can because the water with the magic in it is here. And this was the reason why love was in this room.
So he's suggesting that love with some magic ability is the person responsible for the sabotage, but it was too much for him, and the exhaustion of that magic ritual is what made him pass away. This is again a little more relevant than it might seem at first glance because she is noticing that it's not just the party and being tired from drinking. Um, Gallen, he's a doctor so you would think that seeing a dead body wouldn't be too shocking but it's absolutely had an effect on him. So Galen has been trying to say that Lev basically did it to himself, his magical ritual exhausted him, but Cassia is very sure that Lev was murdered. Okay, so why or... This one I feel like Cassia has already addressed why he isn't surprised, and Cassia earlier suggested that it's the spouse who is usually responsible in some way when their when their spouse disappears. But I want to know why because he is so sure.
So at this point we have to decide how much we trust Cassia. He could have kept Love's body a secret. There's nothing forcing him to tell Gallen or Yanni that it was found. Um, we have Constance who has vouched for him as being a good person, but Constance also doesn't know his entire backstory. And we have some kind of suspicious lines saying things like, he's not too concerned about doing his job. And when Slava first came to him about Lev's disappearance, Cassia didn't look for him. He just kind of brushed that aside. But so far as f how the game generally will work is if you share things with people, they will share with you. Um, Cassia, I do believe, is a trustworthy person. Everyone has their secrets in the game, but whether those secrets are related to wanting to destroy the city, I don't think that Cassia has the motivation for that. Also keeping in mind that whoever destroys the city will also destroy themselves in the process. And Cassia is one of the few people who doesn't seem eager to do that. So basically, trusting Cassia is the better idea here because he kind of already knows. He, he knows what's going on more than he's first seeing, so whether you tell him things or not is letting him know how suspicious you are more than anything. So again, we're going to trust Cassia and tell him who, what Galen is really doing here.
So our notes have been improved a little just to say that Gallen is with the academy and Yanni's with the faculty. So the two large groups that are responsible for the city existing where it is and make it possible for people to live there are now major players in deciding the city's fate. You can choose the non-romance options, but I feel like this is more cutting things out of the game. I mean, visual novels that have um, gay love stories in them are not for everyone, so rather than censor it, you have the option of just not pursuing Cassia. But I, I feel like you're missing something in the story, having seen both sides of that. Okay, sorry about that, my game crashed. Um, it's a really good thing that there's an autosave because I hadn't saved officially in a while. Okay, so we're at the point where Yanni needs to make a decision on who will take the blame. So Isvan just wants this over and done with, which is suspicious in itself that he doesn't care who's actually to blame for it. He just wants it over with so he can go back to stargazing. But how much Isvan is responsible for is one of the questions of the game.
so a little more about Sam. We've already been told that he sometimes has a violent streak and Yanni prodded him into saying it was related to his family, but he's also specifically being called out as a criminal here. And Yanni is suggesting that he could be the person wanting to sabotage it. We haven't seen much of him, but he is one of the options. think that Istvan is the person who was guiding love? I don't think so. His relationship with Slava or the room that love was in? How did he find it? I think this is the most important question. How he would have understood the, um, the blueprints that explained where the room was because they were in faculty code. So we're going to ask about this. So again, one of the themes of the game, women are most affected by the solstice, by the water. So the person who is helping love, he's suggesting here, was a woman who needed to have access to the library to steal the plans. So that can be either Slava, Constance, or Laura. So this probably isn't really true, Yakona just saying she doesn't care about what happened to love. They spent a lot of time together talking and they were kind of both considered outsiders.
so it could have been Yakone, but she has shown less interest in the fate of the city itself, despite her personal connections. And again, for the same reason as Trust in Kasia, this is kind of the same situation where Yukone's end would come with the end of the city, and she doesn't seem like the type who's actually interested. She doesn't have that despair quality that you would think that the saboteur would have, or the person who is helping love do that. Okay, so again, I don't see a reason to accuse Yakone. And learning more about Kala is more important. And this quote's are very important. Only a pure woman is worthy of witnessing such power. So even though um, Yanni has three choices of who to accuse, and she's just admitted that they're all men, Yakone is saying that the person most connected to Kala, and therefore the person who is helping love with the sabotage, is a woman. Okay, and we're getting another warning. Everybody in town loves to warn um, Yanni here. So importantly, she's saying don't be irritating to Isfan. And we've done that a couple times with trying his patience by asking too many questions. But this is an important one. This is one of the ways you can get a bad ending is by pissing off Isfan. So this is just telling you again that um, Yanni can end up putting herself in danger based on who she accuses at the major intersection that's coming up.
case, this is going back to the question, if the problem is not with Istvan's eyes and the problem is not with the telescope, what is the problem? What is he seeing that makes the stars look blurry? And the answer is the dome, because that is what is above the city, protecting it from the outside elements. So obviously we're having more evidence that not just that the sa city is being sabotaged, but that the sabotage is being successful. So here's two more reveals back to back that Istvan knew Gallen's true identity the whole time and that being in the city puts you under compact and that Gallen is under a cop compact. It's also very threatening to Gallen that Istvan is saying he can change that compact anytime he wants, with or without the party's consent. So that's why the compacts are such a problem and why people who have signed them say that they are the same as slavery. So because the person owning the compact can change it to say anything at all. And we've already seen a couple characters are under compact. So like what happened to Sarn, who was the investigator before Yanni, Isvan is threatening to just throw Galen outside and let him freeze to death under mysterious circumstances. So Isvan is kind of admitting that he's already done that, that he just outright killed the last person who came to the city and wasn't able or willing to d give him what he wanted.
So this is recapping a little bit of what happened on the night that Lev disappeared. He was first beaten by Isvan's guards, broke his collarbone, then he went to Galen to make the pain go away. Galen gave him something, some kind of medicine, don't know for sure that that is what made him act as if he was drunk. Sam encountered him and the dogs have been acting weird because of this approaching solstice and there were bite marks on Love's arm. So we can say some who has been seen to be violent in the past, did he attack Love on purpose? So basically Yanni is agreeing that Sam is not the one responsible for it. I didn't take the romance option, but if you do, obviously there's different dialogue here. We finally get Sam's backstory that once again Istvan is involved in some pretty horrible atrocities that this whole time Sam has been living under the roof of the person who ordered his wife and friends tortured and killed. Which gives Sam quite a lot of motive to want to destroy the city. Finally, Yanni is learning that maybe Sam is not who she thought he was. So if Istvan said before that he has fought to build and protect the legacy of the city, even though deep down he feels trapped by the responsibility that the families have given him, the city is still basically Istvan. He was the ruler for over a decade. So from Sam's perspective, destroying the city, especially while it's under Istvan's watch, would be something like revenge for what Istvan did to Sam's family. And here's another warning for Yanni. So just like she was told before that if she irritates the families, in this case who is represented by Isfan, this will lead to a bad end. And Sam is admitting that he kind of maybe knew what happened to Sarn that Sarn was disappearing
disappeared by the families because he was prying too much. Okay, so earlier Yanni received a letter from Galen saying to meet in this room underneath the bathhouse. And this is that meeting. It's very out of the way. And they're now realizing that they have been set up.
So the saboteur continues to be very successful. Um, while they trapped the two of them down here, the second layer of security was just destroyed. So there's only one left. So we have a new note about love. Um, the analysis of the bath water results in the system waters store emotions and intentions. Prolonged exposure could be dangerous. And this is connected back to Lev receiving treatment for his madness by going into the waters of the bathhouse frequently. back with Yanni's diary. As much as I hated to admit it, Galen's knowledge of his craft was impressive. The waters transmitted warmth and other forms of energy, powering the entire system, so the more we knew about them, the larger our chances. My reckless friend confirmed they can cause grave psychological effects, including psychedelic visions, memory gaps, and lapses in judgment. He suspected the vapors alone could have a prolonged, if subtle, effect on citizens. Luckily, the drinking water was in a completely separate system and came from a different source. Then he followed with his usual quackery. He claimed every time someone manipulated the waters, 
their feelings and motivations entered the current and were stored there indefinitely. So this is very much at the heart of the mystery of the game, how the waters have affected the people who live in the city and what choices they're making. I wonder whether yelling at pipes would get Isfan off my case. 